the march of time. As we celebrate our club's 90th anniversary, we should reflect back on the history of Thomasville Rotary. Our group began in 1921 when we became the 924th club in the Rotary world. Mr. J.B. Jemison, who was appointed chairman of the organizational committee, was given good advice by the then president of Rotary International, Mr. Snedeker. The quote was, the men you select should be men of vision executives who are in control of their times so that they can participate in the undertaking of the club. You're coming into an organization founded on friendship and whose members believe and practice its motto, service above self. With respect to those remarks and thanks to the incredible foresight of Mr. Frank Harris and his scrapbook, as well as the archives of the Museum of History, we are today able to experience some of the events that reflect upon our illustrious members. So join me now as we take a trip back in time and reveal a bit of our club's extraordinary past. Frank Harris ran a grocery business, wholesale grocery business on Broad Street, and he was president of Rotary and made a scrapbook which ended up being where most of the information in this slide presentation will come from. I guess he was interested in the history of the Rotary Club and what some of the people had done, I would imagine it was more than just his idea that we should have because they had that printed questionnaire that told you where they went to school and how many children they had and what kind of car they had and uh, an extremely valuable from a genealogical standpoint and from a historical standpoint. This scrapbook is probably one of the most valuable scrapbooks we have at the Historical Society. This is the original charter of our Rotary Club in 1921 and I'd be willing to bet you that not many clubs in the state of Georgia can come up with the original charter of their club if they are over 90 years old. Mr. Will Watt was one of the most phenomenal men that I ever knew. My mother worked for him for years. He was mayor of Thomasville in 1948 and was the first mayor to crown a rose queen, Doris Goddard. He also, while mayor, got the city of Thomasville to adopt the city of Lunenburg and fed and clothed a great many of the poor German citizens who were desperate after the war. Also, one of the most in interesting asides is he took a sabbatical for three months to build the Three Toms Inn. It had burned in October. They had finished it and it was open for business in January the next year, less than 90 days. They worked it on three different crews, 24 hours a day, and built it in less than nine months. And he just took off a, from his job and oversaw that. And of course, his best known contribution to this area is the Georgia Rotary Student Program. He was elected Georgia's district governor of Rotary International and the first of the membership of Thomasville to, to have that honor, which at that point covered the entire state of Georgia. Lawson Neal is the only member of our club that got elected president of the Rotary Club twice, once just before he went off to war and then he came back and made him president once more. And he was president of our Rotary Club when we adopted the Georgia Rotary Student Program. Ran Neal's department store for years. Bill Flowers, of course, was one of our more successful Rotarians. When his father died unexpectedly of a heart attack down in Tallahassee, he was up in William and Mary College in Virginia and was forced to come back and take over the reins of Flowers Baking Company, which grew into Flowers Industries, which is now called Flowers Food. And by far, I su suspect that he's the largest corporation that ever came out of Thomasville. Mr. Howard Flowers there. This is the father of Bill and the man who actually started the Flowers Baking Company. Lived next door 
to the Museum of History and Don Sims House. J.B. Jemison was our first president of our Rotary Club and did many things for the city of Thomasville besides incorporating a new Rotary Club. He will be in the lumber business back in the 1920s but became extremely good friends with John F. Archbow and through that friendship got our hospital built here in Thomasville. He was also responsible for the Gordon Avenue apartments on Gordon Avenue and developed Glenwood subdivision which was next to the brand new high school that we built in 1924. This is Edward Remington Jerger named for his mama who was a Remington and he will of course be the editor of our newspaper help sell a great deal of the programs for the for the city of Thomasville including helping the Rotarians get our new high school built in the 1930s. At that point you had to have not only 51 percent of the voters vote for the project you had to have 51 percent of the all voters vote and so we organized a 11 o'clock club in which you had promised you'd vote by 11 o'clock and our Rotarians got in their cars and ran around all over town picking up people and taking them to the voting precincts. Also very good friends with Mr. Jack Archbow. Miley Edwards ran the Thomasville Steam Laundry and the building of course is still there on the corner of Madison and Remington where Melissa's restaurant used to be. Fred Lovelace was the superintendent at Greenwood Plantation and was the man who orchestrated most of the parties run by the Rotary Club including our first initial organization meeting out at Glen Arvin as well as one or two meetings out at uh, Greenwood Plantation. This is Dr. Arthur Little who was physician to John F. Archbold and again one of those really good friends of uh, Mr. John Archbold. Actually Jack loved to play bridge with these three gentlemen and over the bridge table one day leaned across and said I have fallen in love with Thomas. I'd love to do something for you. What's the one thing you want more than anything else and I'll give it to you. We thought about it a while and said we really would like to have a hospital. And I'm sure the reason they said that is he had been planning to build a hospital in New York on the Hudson Valley in honor of his father and already had the plans drawn. When they said, hey, why don't you put it here instead? The need is a whole lot more in South Georgia than it was on the Hudson Valley of New York. And so in 1924 and 5, he gave us our hospital. Jack Turner. One of the founding fathers of the first automobile dealership in Thomasville, he bought out Logan Ford in about 1916, and of course he and his son ran Thomasville sales for years and years and years. He also, interesting enough, was the man who developed the subdivision around the hospital after it was built, knowing people were going to want to live close to the hospital. So these gentlemen were always shrewd businessmen. I never knew him, I knew his son, and his son was an extremely talented artist. That's Nat Williams, and Nat Williams, of course, started Interstate Enterprises and had theaters all over this area. He had one in Meigs and one in Pelham and one in Boston, which is my favorite, Boston Bean, and three in Thomasville, but they always had just a four-letter word name, and it isn't easy to get highway out of four letters. Dr. John King, eye, nose, and throat doctor, president of Rotary, and the first Rotarian to attend 50 years continuously without missing a single meeting, which wasn't easy because at one point they had to adjourn Rotary and readjourn in the hospital where John wouldn't miss a meeting. We still give an award every year at the Rotary Convention for the man who has the longest continuous service without missing. The only other man in Thomasville that achieved that honor is Mr. Paul York, who also has a 50-year perfect attendance. One of the more unusual things that John King did was the Rotary Club sponsored a nativity scene at the Methodist Church in 1937 and spent 
a good bit of money on it. We later sold it to the Dothan Rotary Club and got our money back. He also helped build a float for the 1927 Ominous Day Parade, if I remember correctly. And he said he and his fellow Rotarians had to come early that morning to put roses. There were little bottles all over the float that they had to put the roses in to keep them fresh. Dr. John King and Jack Turner are the two men sitting in the front. Also, the ladies represent the various nations that there is a Rotary Club involved. This is Mr. Sam York, and he will, of course, start one of the founding fathers of the Thomas Rose Show. And for many years, it was his responsibility to identify all the roses as people brought them in because a lot of times they didn't know what they were. They just knew they had a rose. And he said it went as hard back then. There weren't as many roses. He and his father started Tarmosel Nurseries. But each year, for several years, they published a catalog right after the Tarmosel Rose Show that would show some of the photographs of the Rose Show in it and, of course, such as the lady here with all the roses in her lap. This is Mr. W.J. Powell, who at one point worked with Mr. Frank Harris, got out of that business and started at one point a candy can company, and then W.J. Powell Company, and one of his daughters married Harry T. Jones, and another daughter married Mr. Langdon Flowers. So in many ways, his contributions were pretty big to this city. A.W. Mahler, one of my favorite heroes, came here in 1886 and started for, as a photographer, will photograph Thomasville till he died in 1934. And his collection is by far the best single collection we have of the 19th century. Without his photographs, we would not know near as much about our history as we do. By the turn of the century, the tourist had gone to Florida, and at that point, Mr. Mahler goes back to making photographs of people because he needed to make a living, and no longer took views of Thomasville, which was one of our great collections. Algernon Wilder Mahler, born in 1867 in Newcastle on Tyne, England, and was our greatest photographer. Red Pringle who was a Georgia Tech graduate, just for Robert's sake, <laughs> and Colonel Brown. <laughs> Actually, he was head of the Thomasville Power Plant, and under his tutorage, they actually will begun to run lines out into our county as early as 1819. And the federal government didn't get around to doing that until about 1945. So he had an enormous impact on the whole area of this Grady County, Thomas, and probably Little Brooks. All right, our favorite benefactor of Thomasville, John F. Archbold, which nobody's ever heard of, particularly except in Thomasville, but his father was John D., the, one of the real founding fathers of Standard Oil, and he will come to Thomasville in 1910 to build a plantation out on the Clockney River called Chinkapin. Loved to play bridge with three boys from Thomasville. This is as he looked when most of us would have known him. He was always referred to by his friends as Jack, although his name was John Foster Archbold. Our biggest employer, by far, over 4,000 people work for that hospital now. And of course, Mr. Archbold died he was going shooting, came home with a chill, developed in pneumonia, and died very, very quickly. I think he caught pneumonia like in Friday or Saturday and was dead by the next Monday. Most of the Archibald went out to his plantation to try to coach him back to health, but they were not able to, and he died. Great loss to the city of Thomasville. This is Husty Watt, actually Hansel, named for his grandfather, who was Hansel Judge Hansel, who Hansel Street is named for, he becomes extraordinarily fascinated with photography as a young man of about 16 
and started taking photographs of Thomas Hill in 19, 1896. And when Mr. Mahler gave up taking photographs of the city of Thomas Hill, the next great collection we have of Thomas Hill was done by Husty Watt. He was our first sergeant at arms and will later become president of our club. One of my favorite gentlemen I ever had a chance to know, Mr. Robert Balfour, who founded Georgia Creighton Basket Company as well as Balfour Lumber Company and was involved in most anything that went on in the city of Thomasville for years, he was the only of the original Rotarians still in the club when I joined in 1973. Our first Jewish member of Thomasville Club was Mr. Louis Steinman, who started Steinman Department Store, one of our bigger department stores, and for many years one of the finest in the southeast Georgia, in southwest Georgia. Just to mention a few of the things that Pratt Secrets did, he joined Rotary in 1947, was elected president in 61-62, was district governor 67-68, also helped elect Rotary International Directors both 1971 and 72, was chairman of the executive committee of the entire Rotary Board, served with President Herb Brown as vice chairman of Polio Plus for the entire United States, well-loved member of our club. I thank you for your presence today and for your attention to this historical perspective in celebrating our club's 90th birthday. We honor those who have come before us and look forward to the challenges ahead for our group in the years leading up to our 100th year mark and wonder how many of us will still be here. <laughs>